Hello everyone, today I want to sculpt this dripping liquid effect in ZBrush. So first of all, I just downloaded these free 3D models of armchairs from these people and then for some reason the OBJ file didn't import it properly in ZBrush so I had to download the Max file and then export it from 3ds Max to OBJ. Just untick the material since we don't need the material and hit export. Done. I want to use the least possible brushes or tools to uh, recreate this effect in ZBrush. So let me just close the light box, the good document, new document to make it full screen and then import the mesh. Choose quads and triangles and drag, hold shift, and then go to the edit. All right, if I hit B, the brush window will pop up. So the brushes that I wanna to use today are, first of all, inflate, which is IN, and also cloth brushes, like cloth pull or cloth slide. And also, you can use damn standard, and as always, hit M, the move brush, move standard, or move topological and more importantly the snake hook which will create the dripping effect all right so as you can see our model is consists of different pieces and if i just choose for example b inflate i n you can see that we don't have a unified model so we need to first merge everything to a single mesh. First, I, I go to the deformation and add inflate. You can see we can add more volume to our object like this. And then go to the geometry, dynamesh and give it 200 resolution and hit Dynamesh. So as you can see now, we've merged everything into a single mesh. So now we can just play with our geometry. But first, I want to extract or remove some parts from my geometry. So I hit Control and Shift. As you would know, holding Control and Shift and drag will isolate your model. However, if you hold Control and Shift and go to the brush settings, you can choose from different brushes that will be enabled while using that combination. For example, I choose the Trim Lasso and hold Control and Shift and drag this part. Just make sure you're closing the gap so just don't release your button which will just uh, choose other parts just close the gap so you will have a clean removing of your object like this all right now i want to just increase the size of my brush by holding the s and increase the size and holding shift to smooth out some parts like so All right, now I want to use the brush inflate, B-I-N, make it a bit smaller, and add some inflation to our object. Like so. Again, you can hold shift. We don't want sharp edges or jagged edges since we're gonna create some oil paint effect. We need our edges to be round and somehow with inflation. 
Another useful brush that you can use is class brush. B, C, and you can choose between class slide or class pool. I'm going to use class slide. So make it a bit bigger and you can see how it kind of changed my geometry. So the intensity is too much. Maybe reduce it a bit. Like so. Now I want to I want to create the dripping effect. B S and choose snake hook. Hit OK. Make the draw size smaller and then do this. So as you can see, there's not enough polygons here to create something uniform. So we need to redynamish our geometry before using this brush so i hit ctrl z so you can see it here i redynamish my my geometry i hit ctrl click and it will automatically apply the dynamish if you want more resolution you can actually add more like this hold ctrl click So now, as you can see, if I hold control and drag, it will not redynamish. If you make small changes to your model and then control and drag, it will redynamish. So if you see that your dynamish is not working, you just need to make small changes to your model and then redynamish it. All right. Let's turn off the draw polyframe. And now do this. Play. So here you can see. We don't want it to go toward this way, but I'm going to use move to polish call to slightly improve the shape. Now again, the dynamish. All right, maybe some small dripping from here. If you want more add, add more details, it's up to you. And I'm just gonna play. If you hold ALT while using the inflate brush, you can inflate back and reduce the inflation. So as you can see, I'm 
constantly using Dynamesh to add more details to my mesh and fix it. One final note before exporting your mesh. As you can see, there are different polygroups. So if you hold Ctrl W, you will remove all of them and add one polygroup. This will be easier for you to export your model into a single mesh. So go to export and choose location. Then you can import it easily in other softwares like this. Thanks for watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.